as quickly as you can. Snatch the pebble from my hand. When you can take the pebble from my hand, it will be time for you to leave. Now stand to greet your sensei, Sweet Tooth Joe. Right on. I wake up every day, the fat, and I tell people, the way, especially my children, you wake up every day, you got breath in your lungs, a beat in your heart, and, you, and, you, and your body's, you're able-bodied, it's, it's a blessing. Anything you do after that is just bonus. This week's episode is brought to you by St. Charles MMA. You can visit stcharlesmma.com and mention Roy Robb and Enter the Last Dragon when you sign up and get a free month of training. Now, let's get into some martial arts. With your boy, Roy Robb, Enter the Last Dragon, your host, doing this thing, your Sifu, your sensei for the day. I have a special one coming your way. My buddy, my friend, uh, I get an opportunity to sit down with this gentleman who has definitely reached the upper level. He's going to tell you about his journey. He's going to tell you about his story. He's going to really, uh, just kind of give you a, a day in his shoes. Welcome to the platform. Welcome to the stage, Joey Angelo. What's up, Joey? How you doing, bro? I'm good, Rob. How you doing? Thanks. Thanks for having me, man. No problem, man. No problem. So tell me, tell us about you, man. Tell us a, a little bit about yourself, uh, who you are, all the above from personal life, business life, fighting life, father, whatever. Tell us all about you. Well, to sum it up, man, I'm just like, I'm a hungry Italian Irish kid from Brooklyn that refused to give up, man. Um, wow. <laughs> Italian yeah. Irish. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's from great. Brooklyn, right? Hey, yeah. right. Uh, I'm, I'm a father of four. I'm, I'm 30, so I have my kids young. Um, you know, I work full time, 12 hours a day, four days a week. Uh, hang out with the kids on the days off. Um, yeah. Train and do it all over again. It's like Groundhog's Day all over again. You know, especially uh, in training camp. So, you know, it's. Uh, I had every reason to quit, every reason to not fight, and all that fun stuff. But. Uh, you know, perseverance is key, and uh, I'm here. You know, I, I finally made it to the big show. That's, that's that's major, man. So tell us how you got started. Uh, what was your introduction to martial arts in general? My episode, of course, uh, and my podcast is all about martial arts as well as perseverance in throughout life. So tell us how you got into martial arts. Yeah, of course. So uh, back in Brooklyn, I started boxing, um, self defense reasons. You know, and then uh, I came out here to Vegas when I was 17, and this is mixed martial arts, you know, fight capital of the world. Uh, got into um, Muay Thai, stepped wow. into a gym, literally took a fight that week, a little smoker fight. They call it a little amateur fight. Uh, yeah. I said I had hands. I don't know how to kick people, but I got hands. And uh, then I started falling in love with the art of Muay Thai. Um, then... What got interesting was my little brother wanted to do it, but it was a little too rough on him. Mm -hmm. So we went to uh, a, a studio out here called United Studios of Self-Defense, which is all Shaolin Kempo. Wow. And, and Okinawan Kempo as well. Mm -hmm. So I did that with him, and that really, really, really um, developed my, my striking game. And, if you, and so I'm known for my Muay Thai because I love kicking. I got long legs. But the way I rechamber, the way I'm able to mix in the, the traditional martial arts of Kempo with Muay Thai really messes people up. Dude, I saw I saw on a couple of videos. I, I was going to talk about this. Uh, I was noticing your striking game big time. I saw you switch up on on a couple of fights. You went softball, even though I'm, I believe you fought regular Orthodox, right? Uh, I am a southpaw. You I'm are a southpaw. Natural left, I'm a natural left-handed southpaw. Yeah. Ah, that's such an unfair advantage. So, so I used to box and I only made amateur. Like I won golden gloves, amateur boxing. Um, I literally boxed for about a, two years, I would say. And uh, my only L was to a southpaw. Like <laughs> it's not fair, man. I, I, I was <laughs> supposed to keep my left foot outside your right foot. Oh my gosh! I came back into that your your power hand. It was ah ugly times, man. Yeah, it's complete. It's opposite, but it's the same for you as well. I mean, I instead of circling, I'm fighting orthodox. You know, uh, I honestly, if you if you watch some of my fights, I like to drift to my left. 
uh, with his power. Like I like to go into my guy's power because it tends to get them to overcommit, and that's when I throw my left, almost like that McGregor step. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's so cool. I like to play a little. You know, I like to play with him, but a little bit, almost like snake charming. But uh, that's the mental yeah, stuff, right? <laughs> it's the mental stuff because I like, you know, even the commentators are like, why is Angelo circling to the left? He should be going to the right. It's like, right. No, I'll, go, I'll go which way I want to go because I know what I'm doing. That's so, good, man. So, yeah, how, so, so, did you box there in uh, Vegas for a little bit as well as train Muay Thai? Did you do any um, boxing, or you just went straight towards Muay Thai and Kempo? So, I did a lot of work with Roger Mayweather. Um, I had a really good connection with him. Uh, I go into the gym every first of the month. I give him money, cash, mm -hmm. and uh, we would work my combos. But I got so kick heavy. Like, I loved kicking. I'm like, why am I going to be this close to someone when I could be all the way out here and kick him in the head? Right. So um, that's why uh, bare knuckle boxing is going to get, because I go back to MMA, but bare knuckle boxing is going to get my MMA career that much better because um, it's just reestablishing my hands, so to speak. Right, right, right. So, so and. Yeah. Do you do you think um and I guess it's a little different. Where I'm from traditionally in the Midwest, uh, there's more predominantly there's a lot of wrestlers from Illinois. I'm kinda close to Illinois. The Illinois wrestling thing is really blown up and with the the surgeons of MMA in general St. Louis has kind of uh, started to play catch up, I would kind of say. You know what I mean? When it comes to trying to get more wrestlers and all, and more people knowing about Muay Thai, all the above and martial arts. But how do you feel like the difference is West Coast versus East Coast? Um, just in general, like the style of fighting, the, the competition, the like you like you said, you're in Vegas right now. How do you feel like that? That that it's, it's always seems like there's something going on, right? Yeah, I mean, as far as the stylistic between East and West Coast, I'm not entirely sure if there is one. I know back home, so like Brooklyn, Jersey, all that stuff, they got great boxing. All day. Gleason, they got all those guys. And then if you go a little bit, little bit towards the West, but like you got Pennsylvania, Maryland, all that stuff, then you got crazy wrestling. Like Pennsylvania's got like uh, Edinburgh where Josh Koscheck. Yeah, wrestled, Gregor Gillespie wrestled. Gregor Gillespie's got a big fight coming up. So you got these guys that. <clears throat> so it's just it's a perfect mixture. Same thing with out here, but out okay. here in Vegas, you got you got world class guys from around the world coming coming right. here, right? And you get a taste of every little every, every little bit of it. When I see some dude in the gym, and I'm like, that guy's nasty. I gotta go with him. I I might get, <laughs> I, I might get beat up a little bit, but I gotta learn from him. You know, right, right. Um, so and, and like I said, MMA man, and, and it's just it's just blowing up. Boxing's blowing up. Where you? What about your uh, your your gym? Where do you train out of out of right now? So I'm with. Uh, it's a funny story. I'm with Dewey Cooper. Um, is Dewey the Black Cobra Cooper? He has a uh, um, Black Cobra striking systems. Um, he was one of the. I mean, he had to have been top ten, top five in the world at one point in K1. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm training the gym I train under is called One Kicks Gym or One Kick Nick. Um, a lot of legends came out of that gym. But I, when I first started training, my first ever MMA gym when I came out here was with Dewey. Oh, then, wow. So it's full yeah, circle. Full circle. So I started my career with him. I'm going to end it with him. And uh, I, I didn't have a car at the time. So when, when, when he left the gym and moved all the way across town, I was like, well, I got to find a new gym. I'm, I don't have a car. Yeah. So I trained with Sean Tompkins, Kevin Randleman, um, all, all, these, all these big name guys. And then... Um, now I'm back with Dewey. I hit up Dewey. I said, "Hey man, um, I'm 30 now. I got a car. So <laughs> where are you training? Let's let's uh, let's, let's, let's do, do it." it right? he, was, he was excited, and he and that's what he said. He said a, a, tr a traditional martial artist or a coach wants their yeah. student to leave, but eventually come back, learn you know learn the way of the land, so to speak, and then come yeah. back. Yeah, so man. full circle, man. It's funny. That's great. And then do you um, is so th that gym right now very heavy on stand up. Do you train a lot of ground as well, or tell me some more about that? Yeah, so the gym has a, uh, um, I think it's Cascal Jiu Jitsu. They have a full MMA program. Cool. Um, they, have, they have the huge cage in there. We got a huge ring. Then we have a huge matted area. Um, yeah, we have Teddy with our uh, um, Teddy Conception does all of our wrestling. Uh, Cascal Jiu Jitsu is ran by um, Armando, uh, an undefeated uh, fighter over there. Yeah. Um, it's a constant grind. We have a huge, huge MMA team that are all studs. I mean, they, a lot of them are amateur, a lot of them are pro, but Dewey, Dewey owns a promotion uh, in Philippines. 
So oh, he's wow. got a lot of world class talent coming in and out. They got guys from Dagestan, um, wow. all sorts of Russia. I mean, I'm getting I'm getting beat up from from every every point of the world in this that's camp, a, which is good. That's 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 another next level nugget. So he just gave you a nugget uh, for those fighters or individuals who are interested in becoming fighters that are listening to the podcast right now. Notice that he's saying that he takes the opportunity to take advantage of different competition from different places all over the world. So that's an advantage. Most people won't get that, especially they they're not getting to see that different competition. They get maybe rolling with the same people. You'll hear a lot of uh, professional fighters go and just leave their gym and go somewhere else and train for months and then come back because they get to see that different experience, different level of competition, all the above. Um, t- tell us, tell my listeners a little bit about uh, your amateur start as well as any recommendations that you would give someone who is thinking about joining or getting into MMA. If you had to say, I w- if I had someone that would give me this advice or if I would have done this, it would be X, Y, Z. So, I, like I said, I started in boxing, um, came out here and, and got an MMA. My biggest thing, and I always tell people, and it could be biased, I would have learned how to wrestle first. Wow. Because I feel I feel that wrestling is so much harder to learn than it is to boxing. So I would really, literally start from the ground up. So my kids, my boys, wrestling. Nice. Uh, even my daughters. My daughters will wrestle too. Um, nice. But it's – I fell in love with – so <clears throat> my amateur – a lot of my amateur fights, I was getting taken down. You would, you would, you would blow my direction and I'd fall. I had no takedown defense whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> then Kevin Randleman got a hold of me, which Kevin's a legend, you know, for yeah. idol and stuff. And my takedown defense is literally night and day now. I know how to manipulate the neck. I know how to manipulate, you know, push the head down or pull, you know, underhook up, this and that. Yeah. Um, I live I live for the fence. I love being on the fence. It's my most, when I'm in my MMA fight, it is my most comfortable time. When I'm on the fence and you're pushing into me, you're either going to get the takedown stuffed or you're going to get judo. You know, a lot of, I'm going to hip in and, and throw you. And Good reference. It's, He's also just referenced another martial arts, which is judo, which is heavily used as well in MMA. People don't think it's used, but there's a there are opportunities there because I don't of, think people use it enough. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. What, what, it's only as far as the ladies. It was only one. Was it Ron? Ron uh, what was her name? Ronda. She used it. Ronda Rousey. Now you have yeah. that, that that girl uh, in PFL, Kayla Harrison. She's on it too. She's a beast. Like, I'm gonna she, check it she out. Just, she just won Thursday night. Wow. Here in Vegas. Really split. But yeah, I just, I tell people, if you want to get an MMA, um, gym intimidation is going to be there. Don't, don't be intimidated by the gym. Pick, uh, um, I, I, I say sit through a couple classes and, mm-hmm. and watch how the coach is with his students. Um, and you want someone that's hard on you. You want someone that's going to make you break. This camp, I have broken. I've, I've, I thought I hit my limit and I smashed through barriers. Like it's it's ridiculous how I'm 30, I'm a seasoned vet and I'm still learning and I'm still growing. It's insane. Yeah, yeah I feel you. I feel you 100 percent, man. So, tell us a little bit now on the your amateur career. How many fights did you have as an amateur? Uh, 20 amateur boxing, um, 19 amateur Muay Thai, and then I did 15 amateur MMA. Wow, um, man, you have a very long <laughs> resume. That's impressive. I don't know. Everyone's like, why didn't you just go pro? I was like, ah, I don't know. I just, you know what it was? It was elbows. I don't want to get elbowed. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's so, impressive, man. That's impressive, yeah. man. I, uh, at, at my school, I train out of St. Charles in M- MMA. We've had some very talented individuals who've gone on to the next level, made it to the UFC, made it all the way to the height of like, it didn't matter if it was a professional organization out there. They've been a part of it. You know what I mean? So we can go. We, and it is good to hear when you that feeling when it's like, oh, man, you look next to you. And it's like, I was just training with this guy. And and, and next thing you know, it's like maybe you that somebody's going to be looking at you like, oh, my God, I was just training with this guy. Yeah. Like, tell us a little bit now, too. Like you have this amateur career. What made you say, hey, I'm going to go pro? Who was it your coaches? What 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 happened? Um, so I was, the guys that I beat as an amateur, I was watching on these like little live stream shows and they were smashing a competition. And I'm like, well, I knocked that dude out in a minute and 20 seconds and he just, and and now he's getting a paycheck for it. So, so after I had, I had three kids by the time I was 23. So it was a little bit of a hectic, you know, situation. I talked to my coach and my, the coaches I had around me, 
I was blessed because they made sure that life came first. So they said, yeah. Joey, we don't want we don't want you to spread yourself too thin. Are you sure you want to take on a full MMA camp on top of working on top of being a dad? And I said, absolutely. So, yeah, I saw these guys that I was smashing as amateurs. And then three months later, they're going pro and I'm, I'm watching them on my laptop. I'm like, oh, I mean, they probably only got paid 700 bucks, but hey, it's more than what I had. It's so money. Like, yeah. yeah, so let yeah. me go for it. So I hit up uh, uh, RFA, which is now LFA. And they uh, they offered me a fight, my first pro fight here in Vegas, which was awesome because I was already here. I, st I established a, a uh, you know a rapport with the people. But uh, the only issue is they had said, hey, we have you have to fight at 155. Oh, my God. 30 pound cut? I walk around at 215, 217. <laughs> so I'm like, but back then I didn't. So I was like, I walked around at like 190. So I was like, all right. But I never made 155. I've never even fought 155. That's like sick, bro. That's, oh, my God. And, uh, and if, like I said, if you go, I always tell people, if you go to my Instagram, you'll see that 155 picture weigh in, and you'll see the weigh in now. I always compare it to when Captain America went into that little hyperbaric chamber and they came back out. That's it. <laughs> So it, it's, oh it's night and day. But the Ooh. issue was was uh, I was supposed to fight Gregory Gillespie from Edinburgh, wow. Pennsylvania. Yeah. He now he's thirteen and zero, I believe, and he's fighting Kevin Lee next month. So, and and he's a wrestler, three time NCAA champion. Anyways, he broke his arm in training, so I wanted to fight some kid from Anderson Silver's gym. I lost a fight due to just exhaustion. Like I went yeah. all three rounds. I was so gassed. Um, no, you, you, you're. That's not your natural weight. That's hard. No, man. You, you're so just... I was 170 at the time. So, so what I did was I went on a big win streak at 170, a uh -huh. bigger win streak at 185. So right now I'm on a six fight win streak with one world title in MMA. And the only issue is, is that there's not a lot of money in MMA. Now I didn't get into it for the money, but you know, as a family man, as I'm 30 years old, I'm feeling it a little bit. You you want to fight for more than one thousand at one thousand. Right, right, right. So that's where bare knuckle boxing came in. They offered me big money, and I've done two already, and uh, it's not bad. Like everyone's like, "Oh, you're gonna break your hands and you're gonna get cut up." I'm like, "No, I I broke my hands in my MMA gloves before. <laughs> I have not broke my hands yet. Thank God, you know." Yeah. So tell me about. Let's talk about bare knuckle, man. That's amazing. Congratulations on this platform you just just make made it to. That's that's amazing. What's the history on bare knuckle? Kind of give us a little breakdown. Well, of that. I know. I know my history on bare knuckle is uh, it started off rocky, just like my pro MMA career. I don't know if you've heard the the. I won't name the organization, but it was a big organization. Uh, they put on a huge show in Wyoming, and they didn't pay any of the fighters. I'm talking. Phil Baroni, Chris Lieben, Johnny Hendricks. I can find that um, out. <laughs> yeah, I know I did. It's it's uh, so That's I sad. fought. So they they called me on a short notice and they said, "Hey, do you want to fight Julian Lane?" And Julian Lane's a big kid. He's the one that was like, "Let me bang, bro!" Like he's yeah, that. He's yeah, that yeah. And I said, uh, and he just won a world title in England. He fought some guy named uh, Jimmy Sweeney, some fifteen and zero guy. So I was like, "Damn, uh, uh, first first fight, want me to fight the world champion? I'll do it." I lost a split decision, very close split decision. It, it was respectable. We could have gone either way. Yeah. So I said, okay, it's my first loss since that 155 pro debut. So it was my first loss in six years. And then uh, I, went, I jumped right back on it. I, uh, uh, April, I fought for Backyard Brawl, which is Dada 5000's um, company. And it's really? a, you fought in a little triangle. I'm talking tiny. Wow. Um, you take two steps back and you're literally <laughs> – on it. Yeah, they yeah, said yeah. it's the most confrontational cage in combat history, and they, wow. they meant it. They made that phone booth fighting. Wow! Um, fought a seasoned vet and knocked him out in forty eight seconds. <laughs> oh man, that's so, amazing! Cir circling to my left and throwing my left. I that's so crazy, like, dude! Right hey, <laughs> so um, I, I'm on a win. I feel it good, uh, and then I I called Dave Feldman. I said, Dave, I want to fight for your company. He said, Well, you know this. And I, said, I don't want to hear. But I will be the future of your company. Give me a chance. I said, and I, I pulled the East Coast card. I said, you're from New York. I'm from New York. Come on, let's go. Do me a favor. I said, I always bring a show. I got knocked out of the night in my last fight against Julian Lane that I lost. I got fight of the night. I said, I always, I bite my mouthpiece and move forward. Yeah. And um, and we're here. And this card has blossomed into something. I mean, Bigfoot Silva, Gabriel Gonzaga, hey, the card's yeah. blossomed. That's crazy, and Julian, dude. Julian Lane's on the same card, too. I think he's a co-main event. Dude. Hey, so... He just dropped another nugget. I'm sorry, Enter the Last Dragon. This is so amazing. I bite my mouthpiece and I move forward. 
Yeah. Shout out to that, man. That's a that's a great analogy. Like, hey, you can't change what happens in the past. Keep pushing forward. That's nice, man. So, hey, tell us too. This is kind of this is really getting interesting. So, with with this this promotion, is he only in Florida area, or is he taking it other places? Vegas, major where so, fight promotions usually. They had a card in Mexico last year uh, or this year. They had they're mainly in Biloxi, Mississippi. Mm-hmm. And um, in Florida, because I, and I, I think if we're in Wyoming too, Wyoming was the first state to just say, "Yeah, go ahead, bare knuckle boxing, we'll get, we're yeah. okay with it." They were like the pioneer for it. Um, but as it's getting legalized in more and more states, so I can I can see BKFC, uh, you know, going worldwide. But they have a lot of, according to them, they have a lot of big shows coming up in 2020. So wherever that's legalized, they will capitalize on that market and go yeah. there. That's amazing. Do you do you feel it was important? You made a statement that was very um, kind of stands out. You call the promoter yourself. Mm-hmm. What's your thoughts on that? Like, do you recommend once you've gone pro? Because I guess there's I have a coach who's helping you train. I have a promoter who's supposed to be getting you fights and putting you in the best fights or best situations to make sure you're winning and progressing forward. Good competition. Uh, elevating you because nothing lasts forever and then there's you who have to follow all these different things eating healthy all the above so tell us about that how do you have a coach as well as uh, i know you have a coach you have a school so do you have a a promoter as well i have have a manager who trusts me implicitly and that's amazing yeah i'll make the call because i had connections with dave feldman before that so i knew who dave was okay and when when on that big promotion when no one got paid he actually reached out to me and goes, hey, man, um, sorry that this happened. This is a really, really big black smudge on the bare knuckle community. Let me know if you need anything. And I ignored it. I was pissed. I was like, it wasn't his fault. I was just, I was just like, damn, I was supposed to get 25 grand and a brand new car because uh-huh. we got fight of the night and I got nothing. Yeah. So I was a little like, All right, let me get away from social media for a while. And then um, after that win, that, bare, that backyard brawl win, I told my manager, hey, I'm going to call Feldman. And I'm I'm gonna tell him I want to fight. And my manager goes, "Do what you got to do." And he goes, "Once you get in, then I'll worry about who the opponent was." And that's, that's awesome. when the took over. Yeah, that's cool, man. So, um, if if you are looking back, is there anything additional that you would tell a newbie who is trying to enter the professional fight world? They might be amateurs. They have some good wins. Any recommendations you have for them? Yeah, um, be selfish. You know, always spread the knowledge. But when it comes to the fight game, remember, when you're winning, you're winning, and everyone want, everyone loves you. Everyone's going to piggyback off you. And when you're losing, yeah. you won't get a message, a text message, or a call. It's a very unforgiving game. So wow. the biggest part is having um, – surround yourself with, A, like-minded individuals and keep your circle very small. I have five best friends, and four of them I made, and one is my wife. So, <laughs> right, and that's right, it. And that's right, it. Right. So um, thick skin – and 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 be, there's nothing wrong with being selfish. That's it. But and and you know, just everyone says, oh, fighting is a is a poor man's sport. Not anymore. If you know how to market yourself, we have this beautiful thing: the podcast, the the Instagram, yeah. everything is it's. You can literally, I mean, how many people get rich off Instagram? Oh and, my god! And, and just on views and content alone. Oh, so yeah. I would say I would say have thick skin and be careful who you surround yourself with, um, and uh, and and capitalize on on what you have in front of you. What do you, you know, think? Get, yeah. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I so said, I can get rich off this phone. I just bought. Right. <laughs> yes. It. I can do something crazy on you and post it to YouTube right now. And yeah. after X amount of hits, I'm getting a paycheck for it. That's, That's insane. right. That's insane. Man. I, don't gotta go. what am I, I don't know why I'm going to clock in every day. I can do some crazy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> That's it, man. All right. So do you, do you, uh, where do you think the, the where do you think social media slash professional fighting, slash entertainment is going next like i love the entertainment aspect of mma fighting as well so you always you can take it all the way back to wrestling you have a built-in fan base of individuals who love entertainment right like that's been there and then boxing was kind of like they did a little bit but it was never to the, the the level of what i'm seeing creativity wise there's some MMA fighters as being super creative. Animation. They're doing a lot of stuff. So what do you like, think about that? What do you think about that in general? That separates you from the rest. I mean, look at McGregor. McGregor 
is is he's the he's probably one of the first ones to come out with a suit, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's he he comes out talking all his trash. Dave was like, I didn't know. See, let's backtrack a little bit. When I call Feldman, Feldman's like, "Do you remember fighting for me?" I said, "No, I fought for Feldman in Reno, my last amateur fight. I didn't. Mm-hmm. I completely forgot." And he goes, you're a nice kid, you know, but you need to have that more Brooklyn in you. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, you need to start talking smack. And I was like, Dave, I smile at my opponent. I, I, I let my fight sit. Now, I can, if you if you piss me off, uh, I'm going to zing you. Yeah, but yeah. I can't, like, I can't manufacture, uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure I could, but I just choose not to manufacture drama, crap talk, and all that stuff. So, yeah. but McGregor, he put everyone on the map. Chael Sonnen. Chael Sonnen, Dominic Cruz, and Conor McGregor, easily uh, uh, the best shit talkers in, in, uh, in, in MMA. Hands down. They would talk so much. It's, it's ridiculous, man. And, and then you have the persona, the facade, the, the suits. I mean, McGregor just put it on the next level. Yeah. And, uh, and you have a lot of guys trying to imitate him, and some of them are succeeding, some of them. And that's, that's, it's a double-edged sword because you come out looking like McGregor, and you're, you're in your guy's face, and you this and that, this and that, and then you go and get knocked out. You look yeah. foolish. <laughs> only, only McGregor can get knocked out and still not look foolish. Dude, he, when I say he was uh, – he, he, he got paid. He did, his, he did his the right way. You know what I mean? Because some people, like you say, even at the highest level – there were wrestlers, boxers that were cutting way bigger checks than any MMA yeah. fighter could ever even think of. Of course. And Conor McGregor was like, he made the Mayweather thing look amazing. I mean, yeah. for him to even, hands down, that's that's unbelievable. I you know. know what I mean? <laughs> he, he, <laughs> you know went, he didn't brand himself. He literally made himself an empire. An empire. That's it. He, he's, he's a household name now. And he that, that duty. He, dude, he lost to is amazing. That dude can go, man. That Russian kid. Oh, is, Khabib. Oh, my yeah. God. On a whole nother, trust me, I train a lot of those guys from that region of the world. Fighting, that's all they do. And they, they, every single one of them, they might not be able to harness it, but they have brute strength. Yeah. Brute strength. I'm like, Jesus. I mean, this is, this is crazy. But, yeah, he's a household name now. Um, yeah, uh, and it's a true rags to riches story. He literally was collecting, um, what is it, uh, government you know welfare whatever uh 100 bucks a week from the you know waiting in, waiting in line waiting for his check or whatever we're getting it in the mail and now look at him so Got it's a true rags to riches people want to hate on him but we didn't grow up very fortunate in my family you know i got yeah. five brothers and three sisters if and you're gonna tell me if if i got a hundred million dollar payday i might act <laughs> i might act a fool too i mean I, I, won't, I won't be i won't be punching people in bars but i might i might do some you know some flossy stuff it that fight he did against it, it, it spiked when I want to say one of his guys threw that um that that threw that um it was a chair or something at the bus that could be his bus remember that yes and like yeah, yeah. that UFC like it blew up even more the trending yeah. level was like whoosh, like it was like oh my god what's happening now um it, it was like uh, it was a time I guess where it could be like oh that's bad for ufc but it was amazing for ratings because people were tuning in big time the marketing team took advantage they ate that up it's literally they they love drama people and like what dana white said you can have a baseball uh, you know baseball game here a football game here and a hockey game here a fight breaks out over here everyone's gonna run to it Oof. that's that's it's yeah. amazing so um it's they manufacture they they that wasn't manufactured i really think those guys don't but they capitalize on that drama yeah so yeah. and that's the dream for me man i i think uh i took these last three fights um not my last three fights but i'm i just want to buy the family a house i have, a, I have an amazing job where i work but my thing is i might i, I might not be mcgregor rich i mean who knows but all these people watching people might someone might like me and put some money into me but yeah. i just want to just want to get a house for the family and the kids and i got two giant dogs and then uh, that's it, man. Retire, retire peacefully. You know, well, well, I, well, I can, not when I have to. When it, right, exactly. And all right, so we kind of talked about where you're at now. You got this big fight coming up next week. How's uh, training going? Intake, what are the some food intake, all the above, competition? How you feeling? Rest? How's that going? Yeah. How's it feeling? Rest and sleep is uh, is non-existent because quick. So I get up at six a.m. So I have four children, and they go to four different schools around the valley. So what I do, uh, I know. So what I do is I get up at 6 a.m., make lunches, breakfast, this and that. I drive three, 
to three different schools. My wife drives our, our youngest because she lives closest. Then I go to training from, um, I come home, I eat breakfast myself. I go to training from uh, like 10.30 to about 1.30. I come home, shower, and I go to work from 4 p.m. to 4 a.m. Wow. That, I do that every single day. And I catch cat naps here and there. Like I, if I have some downtime at work, I'll pass out uh, an hour or two here, I'll, I'll sleep. Um, but that's literally my schedule and there's no exaggeration in it. And everyone that's who knows crazy. me personally, like, dude, you, you look, I was, I was 217 pounds last month and now I, I woke up today at 194. That's so crazy. I know. So my food intake is great. Um, I have, I have my meal plan on the, well, it was on the fridge. I'm pretty sure one of the kids colored <laughs> on it, but uh, no, I'm, uh, I have, um, I have an egg white sponsorship. So they send me, cause I don't really eat the yolks. Some okay. fighters do some fighters. So I, I, I have a, it's called Egg Whites International. They, they sponsor me. They send me gallons, like gallons of egg whites. It's ridiculous. That's um, amazing. Yeah. So my food intake is great. Um, everyone who knows me, I'm a fat kid at heart. I love, after the fight, win, lose, or draw, my first thing is I don't drink too much, but Hennessy is my favorite drink. <laughs> cheese, cheese, cheesecake is my favorite food. And Guinness, Guinness is my favorite beer. So literally after every fight, I sit down, I, I, I go uh, to the local supermarket over there, I get a cheesecake, I put it in the fridge for after the fight, and I always get a little thing of Hennessy, one Guinness, and one cheesecake, and that's how I celebrate. So it's, that's, it's, uh, hey, that's, a, that's a great celebration. That, that's it, man. But no, it's training camp has been amazing. I, uh, it's been a 12-week camp um, because I was supposed to fight last month, and one of their venues didn't get approved for BKFC, so they said, hey, we're going to push it another month. So I said, okay, um, I never had a 12 week camp, but, um, I'm on point, man. It, the the weight's coming off nicely. Uh, I'm snapping my jab out there. My opponent is tough. He's, he just, he's tough. I mean, there's yeah. no other way to put him. He's not, his footwork is a little sloppy. Um, his, his hands are, they're heavy. Um, but he is a tough kid. It, I, I can tell you this. I, I would love to say, I'm gonna go out there and knock him out. It's going to be a five round war. Right. It's going to be the right. battle of the worlds. Um, I'm, I'm I'm excited, and those are the type of fights I want right now. Yeah. I, I want I want time in the ring. Um, you know, I, I want to get out there, and I want to give the you know the crowd a show. Good so, for you, man. Good yeah. for you. Now, how? What's the? Uh, do, do they give you like a seating capacity of the place, or how big this place is for your for the fight coming up next week? So I'm I'm flying my wife out there, and I'm looking for tickets for her. It's it's the place is huge. I mean, oh, really? it's, yeah, that's where they had the uh, the Lobov versus Malinaji fight. Oh wow, man! So that place, it's it's at the Florida Fairgrounds in Tampa, and the place is huge. I'm looking wow. at the seating map. I'm like, Geez. yeah. So, um, if it sells out, which I think it will, it'll be the biggest, biggest crowd I've ever fought in front of. That's amazing, so, man! Hey, I'm, congrats, I'm excited, congrats, man. dude! Yeah. That's amazing. Hey, so I, I wake up every day. The fact, and I tell people, though, especially my children, you wake up every day. You got breath in your lungs, a beat in your heart, and your and your body's you're able bodied. It's, it's a blessing. Anything you do after that is just bonus. There's another nugget. Yeah. So check this yeah. out. He just gave it to you. He's like, salute to being on top of the earth versus the earth being on top of you. Waking up every Absolutely. day, man. That's yeah, amazing, as as I'm man. Six feet above ground, I'm happy. That's <laughs> it, brother. That's it. All um, right. So, yeah. so, did me, so I usually like uh, I usually like to take an opportunity to highlight anything you have going on that you are special projects you might be going on or anything that you have been thinking about or anything that you want to share to fans who's going to tune in friends family if you have you could take as much time as you want to share whatever you want this is your moment right now and then we'll go on to my next segment of the show go ahead of course uh special projects it's not really fight related but uh like i said i took this i took this i have a great job um and and i love my job very few people can say, hey, I love going and clock in. Um, but I'm using a lot of that money for, uh, you know, saving for a house and stuff. But the fight money is for a house. But I'm actually looking and I'm, it's in the development, developmental stages to opening up an indoor playhouse for the kids. For, for it's, I mean, a huge, I don't know, uh, you're in St. Louis, right? Yeah. I don't know. We have something like, yeah, yeah we and, do. I mean, and they're always packed. I'm like, damn. Packed. So we go there and I'm always spending 15 bucks a kid when I go there, plus snacks and this and this. So I'm like, and I, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to open up, a, I'm, I'm gonna open up this. You, you could know? do it. I just went to one yesterday for, for my daughter's friends. My daughter's five, but she'll be sick. The, the girl turned six and it's a jump house. And it, it was called like Arizona or something. Yeah, and yeah. they have trampolines. They have large things where they like 
rock climbing and stuff. And dude, I'm talking about crazy packed money they go, galore. They go nuts. They go nuts. I'm like, I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking at every parent, and I'm looking at every kid, and I just see dollar signs. I'm like, and they stay there, and they get their kids tired out. But we're gonna put a little different spin on it. We're gonna actually, we're gonna actually cater to the parents as well. We have some stuff in the works, but uh. Nice. You know, I'm taking my fight money and I'm making more of it. I'm not going out there and I'm not, you know, I love Andy Ruiz, but he's, granted, he's a rags to riches story. He's going oh, out there yeah. and he's, he's blowing his money, which is awesome. Yeah. You, know, you live your life, you know, you only yeah. live once. Yeah. But I'm going to um, invest it and, and, you know, become an entrepreneur. Eventually, I want to work for myself. Yeah. But um, that's that's a small project going on right now. Um, and it's, it's something that I'm passionate about. I love my children. I live for my kids. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, uh, I had him super young, and like my right now I'm 30. My dad's 52, and he's in better shape than I am. Oh, I, sw- nice. I swear, my, he's in New York. He comes out and he, he gets in a ring with me, and he, he can hold his own with me. I'm like, that's what I want to be. I don't want to be 70 with a five year old. I'm like, cool. right. I, I, so, so, um, yeah, it's it's that's what it's got going on right now. As far as the, uh, the everything else is good, man. Training camp is good. I'm healthy. Um, I'm I'm happy, man. I'm I'm blessed to be doing. You know, I got people reaching out to me, such as yourself, wanting to put my face on their on podcast. I, I literally no complaints whatsoever, man. That's what's up, man. Yeah. So so check this out. Here's my time to stump you. So what I do is I actually take a little bit of time, a free moment, and I ask you a question to try to see if I give you a clue. But I see I try to see if I can uh, stump you with a uh, related to martial arts question. Okay. So since 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 this uh, was built around MMA, uh, we're gonna ask some questions around fighters that's in your weight class. Okay. So middle middleweight, middleweight, yep. professional. It doesn't matter which organization they were a part of. Um, but if you had to name for me five fighters, five that you feel were uh, changed the game or the sport of mixed martial arts. Doesn't matter what time frame. Name your five. Top five. Middle well, I'm going to go with my favorite fighter of all time, and I think he fought my weight, is Ernesto Hoos. Oh, my God. K1. K1, Ernesto. That's it. My, my favorite fighter of all time. And he, like I said, it levels to it. He perfected the body shot to that hip swivel hard lip, uh, leg kick. So he I'm kicks going trees Ernesto. down, dude. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Ridiculous. Man. No, it's yeah. <laughs> uh, Ernesto Hoos. Um... I'm going to go another one for that time frame is going to be Andy Hug. Okay, okay. Um uh, then I'm going to go you get you can't say I mean Anderson Silva 100%. I was waiting on it. <laughs> yeah, Anderson Silva. <laughs> Middleweight. Um ooh, my favorite my probably my second favorite fighter ever, Yoel Romero. Who is and, this? And I love Yoel. I love the fact that he's an athlete. I've loved the fact that he's 42 years old. And another middleweight, man. I'm going to have to go. You know what? I'm going to go with, with uh, you know, the blue collar worker, the the gritty bite your mouth piece. I'm going to go with Rich Franklin. Oh, wow, man. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I could do you. Go with, I, I relate a lot to Rich as far as, yeah. uh, you know. So so you have a little bit of a little bit of everything. You got some finesse. You got some yeah. grittiness. You got a little bit of both. I'm going to go with those guys that changed the game. Um, Ernesto freaking... Sap dude, what is his name? Bob Sap. He kicked yeah, the tree yeah. down, dude. He kicked the tree down. You know wow. how heartbroken. You know how heartbroken I was when Bob Sap beat Ernesto Hoos. That was it. Was heartbreaking. It wasn't even fair, right? It wasn't fair. It, it was like what? Yeah. yeah, that dude yeah, is so, huge. Oh, he's a he's a giant. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Those those are my top five middleweights. Uh, granted, I'm gonna be fighting a little a little thing for you guys. I'm. I can fight lower than 85, and I'll fight heavyweight. My last fight was at 205. So I'm like, everyone calls me the white Anthony Johnson. Everyone's like, bro, 55, heavyweight, this and that. So I will fight. Um, as long as the fight makes sense, I will fight, uh, um, you know, whatever weight class they need me at. Yeah, cool. Yeah. I understand, man. Sorry. I understand. What uh, what so this, I, got, I, got a, I need you to tell my listeners how do they follow you, how do they you can think of because i'm gonna put them in the show notes below so where do we start instagram facebook twitter all the above yeah uh, so i have uh my instagram handle which is my what i'm on mostly is angelo angelo underscore mma 11 honestly if you just type in joey angelo you'll see mine it's a picture of me with my title 
Um, Perfect. Actually, I'll, show you, I'll show you this one. Because I got all my, all my, it's going to be this picture right here. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's cool, man. Keep it up there. Let these, let these people know. And they come right, right, right. Uh, and then um, Facebook, too, is, uh, is, is just under Joey Angelo. And it's actually a picture of me holding my wife. Because we got married right. Right, right after the last fight. Um, nice. Congratulations to that, man. Thanks. I appreciate it. So, uh, yeah, and Twitter, my manager hates the fact that I'm not active on there as much. But um, I actually just tweeted uh, – I was, I was actually just tweeted Violent Bob Ross because he's like, well, I guess this is what happens when you fight in your, home, in your opponent's hometown. And I wrote, he swung, he's from Long Island, but good fight. It could have went either way. Oh, man. Yeah, so, Luis. Luis is going to yeah. be like, what? Oh, man. Okay, no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> that, that fight was amazing. But, yeah, so just uh, – Instagram and, and Facebook is the way I'm at, and I, I update everyone. I, I make, I'm always on my story. I'm always posting stuff. Literally, I try and make people experience the full training camp experience with me. You know, they see my progression from being um, a really happy fat guy at 217 pounds all the way down to 185. Nice. Um, and I, I guess I would, I would be nothing without my fans. You know, these guys, these fighters, I think they're too good for the general public. It's 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 not me, you know. It's uh, it's I'm always like to keep my fans informed, and uh, and it's entertainment for me, you know. It oh, makes like I said, it makes them feel like they're in training camp with me. Dude, you provided a lot of a lot of value to my uh, for my listeners today. I appreciate you taking the time for the Enter the Last Dragon podcast. Um, I feel like I definitely have to bring you back on because it it seems like you got a lot of layers of this onion that hasn't been peeled back. So it's, it's, it's been a it's long a lot, career. Man. Yeah, dude, you got yeah, a we lot. Haven't even man. Got, we haven't even got into my first ever pro fight, Sando, where I had to fight two guys. Yes, you just heard from Joey Angelo. He did win that fight in Tampa, bare knuckle fighting. He is an excellent individual to uh, check out. Go check him out. Go follow him. Go check out the highlight that I did of him on YouTube. You can check that out uh, on the Enter the Last Dragon YouTube page. Become a dragon. Go subscribe. Your host, Roy Rob, signing out.